Welcome back everyone and thank you so much for joining me on today's video. If you are infantry, leave me a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to know where in the world you're from. Maybe you're a veteran of infantry, maybe you're a current serving infantry person. Please let me know. I'd love to know where you are around the world and where you've served and what regiment or unit or role that you were in as the infantry. Today's video, as it stated, is focusing on Canadian Army Infantry. And why? Why am I talking about Canadian Army Infantry? I'm an artillery gunner. I'm a reservist artillery gunner. I'm not really, uh, you know, a subject matter expert, of course, to talk about infantry. This is very true. Uh, and this is why I want to showcase the infantry more, because recently I'm getting tired of listening people talking about things they have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, of course, the Ukrainian conflict going on right now is one of those prime examples of people who think they know what they're talking about and clearly just don't. And the infantry, unfortunately, seems to be one of those so many times misunderstood trades of forces around the world. If you're an infantry soldier serving right now, particularly here in the Canadian Forces, thank you for what you do. Truly, thank you for what you do. And uh, the ability you have to serve in this nation, in the environments that you operate in, the cold you know, the minus 40, 50 degree weather, there's not many militaries around the world that can do that. You were able to fight in the wind, cold, snow, ice, everything. Take that with some pride. I mean, a lot of infantry units that I've worked with with the British Army, armoured infantry, mechanised infantry, light infantry, um, even the, uh, the airborne regiments, right? You put them in some of the environments that Canadian infantry go into in minus 45, minus 50 degree weather, they would struggle. Here in Canada, we have a little bit more grit, I think, sometimes when it comes to dealing with the environment. Um, you know, maybe our equipment is not where we want it to be. Maybe we have a multitude of other situations that are impacting our ability to do what we want our um, infantry to do. But that's not something I can speak to. You know, I can't talk about CAF politics and CAF, um, I guess, strategic or tactical developments um, and equipment and all that sort of stuff. I want to really zero in on, though, the capability of what the Canadian infantry soldier can do. As I said, Canadian infantry soldiers have that little bit more grit than what I would expect from, and no offence to my British brethren, but British soldiers. Because Canadians come from, majority of the time, especially out here in the western side of Canada, and middle of Canada, uh, farmers, you know, hunters, uh, outdoorsmen, um, are accustomed to the mountains and to extreme cold and extreme heat and and some of you are probably laughing saying Matt extreme heat Canada really seriously we can get plus 35 plus 40 degrees Celsius weather here in Western Canada or across the whole country that's pretty intensive heat to be running around in as an infantry soldier I mean going to Afghanistan we were pushing out 40 to 45 degrees that's without being inside vehicles you put a vehicle on top of that with an engine running beside you as an infantry soldier as a crewman it all adds up right so the diversity of an infantry soldier in Canada is stronger, I would say, than a lot of militaries around the world. Because, as I said, I find personally that a lot of the infantry soldiers that I've met have a lot of skills and life experience that go way beyond that of, you know, yeah, okay, you're street smart. You know, in the UK, a lot of infantry soldiers are very street smart, right? They were able to get into a good scrap. They had a good ability to get into a fist fight, right? They'd be at the bar, being a little rowdy, right? And they were, they were bruisers, right? I call them bruisers because infantry in the British Army, they they wanted to scrap all the time. They wanted to get to fights. So that's this kind of British culture, right? English culture, um, Scottish culture, Welsh culture, Irish culture, it's all there, right? The, the fighting spirit or the boxing that, you know, infantry really love their boxing. I'm not saying Canadian infantry don't, but what I'm saying is Canadian infantry in my experience speaking to them, knowing them, get, getting to know them and, and learning about them, is they have so much more outdoors experience. They know how to hunt. They know the lay of the land. They know how to track across mountains correctly. They know how to dig trenches in appropriate levels of ground and soil because they've been farmers and they've done farmers all that, farming all their life. They know so much more about how to operate as a soldier just from coming straight from civilian life. Um, and it's, again, this isn't just specific to Canada. I'm sure there's other nations that have very similar qualities. But hats off to Canadian soldiers that have that background. And for those who don't, that's completely fine too, right? You're going to learn. You're going to experience that of those people who have those experiences around our beautiful country, right? Um, I have to admit, I've learned a lot from people who hunt, uh, who have been in the mountains, have done a lot of hiking, have done a lot of exercises and things uh, in the mountains or have lived in the mountains for a lot of time. And even in the cold, right? There's... 
tips and tricks that you learn from these individuals who have done and worked in environments like on the oil rigs, right? We don't have oil rigs really in the United Kingdom, right? So when I came across British soldiers in the United Kingdom as infantry soldiers, they're not going to know how to, you know, do three days of long hard graft on an oil rig in minus 50 degree deg weather and still operate, right? They know how to layer up their clothing correctly. They know how to, you know, keep hydrated, feed themselves properly for really long endurance uh, sessions out on the rigs. Now, again, I'm not saying the UK doesn't have these same kind of industries or kind of trades, but I truly do feel that the Canadian infantry soldier is one of the most proficient in being able to capitalize and utilize on skills that we have just as natural Canadians. Now, I'm not a natural Canadian. I wasn't born here. I didn't grow up with Timmy's hockey and all that good stuff. But even I find the sports the Canadians do give them a bit more of that fighting spirit. You know, I talked about the Brits being sort of that culture of getting into boxing, things like that. Hey, look, if you've ever seen a hockey game, I think we can all attest to the fact that Canadians also don't mind a good scrap. Look at Afghanistan, right? I've worked alongside Canadian infantry soldiers in Afghanistan, some of the boldest, bravest troops I've ever met in my life, right? And they had such a wicked sense of humor. Like, they're just awesome. Um, and they just lumped up and got on with it, right? Um, a lot of the younger infantry soldiers I met with the British Army, uh, sometimes they just complained. They just didn't didn't know how to shut up. They just wanted to go home and play football, right? Or, you know, it's like, mate, you joined the army. That's what you're here for. Um, now, I'm not saying all of them. I'm saying a very small minority, but I never have ever experienced that with Canadian infantry soldiers. I really haven't. Um, and that that's, again, kind of coming back to that heritage, that cultural standing of Canadians. We... They're built a little different. I know that sounds a little strange. And, you know, Americans, for some reason, give Canadians a fairly hard time. I understand why. You know, I'm not going to get involved with the politics, etc., etc., and the different standards and doctrines that the Canadian Armed Forces have, have adopted. It's not my place to say. But what I will do is stand up first and forefront in front of those people who want to judge and get in the way of the reputation of the Canadian infantry and say, shut up. <laughs> You have no idea what you're talking about, especially those speaking about, um, you know, Ukraine and situations going on right now. And, you know, there is obviously uh, soldiers training Ukrainians right now to deploy and getting ready to go um, on their own, you know, unfortunate reality, which is having to go to war. And our infantry is training these soldiers to do what they need to do best. And you hear these comments of, well, they've never even been to war. They just do training exercises. That makes absolutely no difference. The moral fiber, the character that the infantry have to train the tactics, procedures, and doctrine that we have and have used for a long time in NATO or in Canadian Armed Forces and Canadian Infantry are going to stand these people up to do what they need to do when it comes down to it. Um, it has no impact on the ability for the Canadian Infantry Soldier to fight. Um, so, again, massive shout out and thank you to those who are serving in the Canadian Infantry. I appreciate you. Uh, you are my customer, so at uh, the observation post, uh, you know, with my forward observation officer, and I'm his uh, supporting member as a tech, providing that fire support for you. Um, I want to say that if it ever comes to it, and we really do go to toe-to-toe -to -toe with a actual enemy engagement, um, I will be very proud to know that I'm working alongside Canadian Infantry, um, and, and thank you for what you do. And hopefully, if you do require my help, um, I'll be able to provide you with that highest quality and level of support from the artillery. Um, you know, in the army, we all make fun of ourselves with what we call gentle banter. You know, it's having a little laugh at one another. We all have a bit of a ribbing, you know, making fun of each other. But it's not it's not nasty. It's not vindictive. You know, uh, it's just to have some fun. And uh, that's also something that, you know, the infantry is really good at, right? Uh, giving the uh, giving the artillery a hard time, giving the armored corps a hard time. And that's okay. You know, that's what keeps the uh, morale bonding together. But um, if you're interested in joining the Canadian infantry, or any infantry for that matter please make sure you speak to those who have actually operated or worked in that trade, in that profession. There's nothing worse than getting third-hand experiences from one of the greatest opportunities in the military. The infantry is literally... Everything around the infantry is to support the infantry. So that is what the Army's core focus is around, supporting those going at the tip of the spear. So speak to those people at that tip of the spear before you make your decisions. And I'm not saying it's all golden. There's a lot of challenges that you can have in the infantry, but it's certainly an opportunity in trade that I would say safely is an incredible life skill and opportunity for you to go for. And uh, make sure if you do join, that you let me know of your experiences so I can pass on that good message to others joining in the future. Thanks again for joining me, folks, and have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.